Check out this cool demo. All you need is a container, some kind of a glass mug or steel mug, a playing card on top of it, I'm using my Uno card, and on top of that, keep a coin. And now you just flick that card and see what happens. You can try this at home, boom! The card flicked away, went away, but the coin stayed and, and fell into the mug. Why, why didn't that coin also flick away? To answer this question, we need to understand something called inertia. So let's do that. What is inertia? Well, inertia is an object's resistance to change its state of rest or motion. What does that mean? Well, let's take an example. Take a train, which is at rest. Now, if I go and push it, will it move? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Why? You would say it's extremely heavy. Well, in physics, we would say that it has a lot of inertia because of which it's resisting to change its state of rest. You see? To change its state of rest, you need to put a lot of force on it. That means it has a lot of inertia. But it's not just about rest. Now consider a moving train, okay? A very fast moving train. Now, can I go and make it stop? <laughs> Again, you'd say, no ways. No ways I can go and make it stop. Why? You might say it's coming with a lot of speed, but even if it was not coming with a lot of speed, even if it was coming very slowly, do you think I would be able to stop it? No. I wouldn't be able to stop it. Why? Because it has a lot of inertia. Again, you can see because of its inertia, it resists to change its state of motion this time. So can you see? Inertia is basically the ability to you know, stay at rest or to continue in motion. Basically the first law. The first law is also called, Newton's first law is also called this law of inertia, that's why. So it's this tendency that objects have because of which it'll say, no, I will not change my state. If an object is at rest, because of its inertia, it'll stay at rest, it'll continue to stay at rest. If an object is in motion, because of its inertia, it'll continue to stay in motion. On the other hand, let's look at a bicycle. Can, if I go and push that bicycle, will it start moving? Yeah, of course. And similarly, if a bicycle is moving, can I go and stop it? Yes, very easily. What does this mean? Does it mean it doesn't have inertia? Of course it does. It does have inertia and I, an ant can't stop it, right? It does have inertia, but its inertia is much smaller compared to the train's inertia. So you can see, we would say this has more inertia because it has more ability to resist changes and a bicycle has much smaller inertia, much less inertia compared to the trains. Now, why is that? Why do these trains have more inertia and the bicycles have less inertia? Well, you have guessed it. They have more mass and this has less mass. So you can see inertia is directly related to mass. Something that has more mass will have a lot more inertia and something that has less mass has a much smaller inertia. It's much easier to change its state of rest or motion. Now, I'll show you an example of this, a consequence of this that you can you you might feel almost on a daily basis. When you go in a tr when you go in a train or a bus, let's say you're standing in a bus and the bus suddenly starts, what happens? You fall backwards, right? Or you feel a force that's like somebody's pushing you back, but nobody's pushing you back. Why do you do? Why do you almost suddenly feel like you're being pushed backwards? It's because of your inertia. How does it work? Well, let's see. You're standing on the bus, the bus is at rest. Let's say the bus suddenly starts moving. When the bus suddenly starts moving, um, the, the floor pulls on your, the, the friction between the floor and your feet starts pulling on your feet. And as a result, your feet starts accelerating forward. But as of now, there is no force acting on the rest of your body. Therefore, the top part of your body will try to stay where it is. And now you can see what's gonna happen. The bottom part of your body will start accelerating because there are forces acting on it. The top, top part of the body will try to stay as it is. That's the reason why you feel like somebody is pushing you backward. That's why you feel you fall backwards. But notice, it's not that somebody is pushing you back, but the floor, the friction is pulling your legs forward and that's why you fall back. Similarly, now consider a case where you're in a moving bus. What happens when the bus breaks suddenly? You fall forward. Can you now pause the video and understand why that happens? Um, again, it has something to do with inertia. Pause and try. Okay, so here you have the bus, which is moving. You are also moving along with the bus. So you're moving, you're moving, you're moving, and suddenly the bus stops. What happens? Well, the bus has decelerated and stopped. And when the bus stops, 
you know, there's frictional force that will pull back on your moving legs and makes your legs also stop. But as of now, there's no force acting on the top part of your, of, of your body. Therefore, because of its inertia, it will continue to stay in motion, right? And therefore, the top part of the body will keep going forward. And that's the reason why you will fall. Again, it's not that somebody is pushing you forward, but this time notice the friction is pulling your legs backward and that's why you fall forward. So this is again a beautiful example of inertia. Now, let's see if we can use the idea of inertia to explain what we saw earlier. So let's look at the same thing in a slow motion. See what happened. When I flick the card, I put a force on that card. And we learned that when you put a force on something, it'll accelerate. So it accelerated forward, okay? But what about the coin? I didn't put the force on the coin. There was some frictional force between the coin and the card, but that card moved so quickly away that friction didn't have enough time, that it, it, it didn't have enough time to put a force on that coin. And so the coin was able to resist its changes in motion. Change, uh, resist, its change in, uh, re resist the change in the state, its state of rest. So it resisted it and it continued to stay at rest. And that's why, look, the coin stays at rest for a small moment. It does move a little bit because there is some force, but it stayed at rest and therefore the coin did not move because of its inertia. And of course, once the card was gone, now gravity starts pulling down on it. And because of gravity, it starts accelerating down and therefore it falls into the mug. So there you go. Beautiful, isn't it? So remember, inertia is an ability of an object to resist changes in its state of rest or motion. And more mass, more inertia.